Hey, you. Me? Yeah, you. Do you like Pokemon while also having spare time in life? Mm, after the sandwich, yeah. Then introducing PokeTubers, the way to give meaning to life. Learn the secrets to becoming the best PokeTuber for just a small fee of $99.99.99. Please, I bet I could drop a better guide than that, and best part is it'll be completely free. Well, we got work to do. Let's get to it. YouTube is a platform that brings many communities together, and the Pokemon community is no exception. Many people love the franchise as a whole, and thus comes the idea to make videos about them. Many great people have joined YouTube and have really given the Pokemon community a good name, like the Pokemon Professor. This man's a legend. However, this is all about you wanting to become a PokeTuber. So we'll talk about all the things you need to know and do to become a true PokeTuber. And don't worry, as you won't be doing this alone, as I will be joining on this journey and make my own Pokemon channel. So let the disaster begin. Now before we talk about PokeTuber techniques, we need to start off with the basics. Every channel needs a good username name and profile picture, uh, something that will get people to recognize you. Okay, the profile picture is the easy part. I mean, I want to be unique from the other PokeTuber, so I'm going to choose a Digimon as my profile picture. It's coming up with the username that's going to be a little tricky. I mean, it took me weeks to come up with the username I have right now, and it still turned out to be garbage. Now, there are some techniques to figuring out what works, like just writing down some random words and seeing what fits together. Is this a joke to you? All right, with the username and profile picture already set, we need to decide on what kind of PokeTuber we want to become. There are many types of PokeTubers in the community to watch, so here are a few of the categories. There are the anime PokeTubers who base their content on the Pokemon anime, making discussion videos or coming up with their own anime-based theories. There are the shiny hunters who usually livestream them looking for shiny Pokemon in the game and then uploading their finds on video. Pokemon artists do... well, Pokemon art. Competitive PokeTubers base their content on the competitive side of the games, usually discussing what the best teams are and the proper tactics for battle. Then we have what I call the gameplay PokeTubers, who usually base their channels on playing Pokemon games. They can either be normal runs of the main Pokemon titles, runs of fan-made Pokemon games, or they'll do challenge runs, usually considered as some kind of Nuzlocke, that adds a little something extra to the normal playthrough of a game. Alright, so for my channel, I thought we'd do a mix of competitive and Nuzlocke's. Now I know what you're thinking, Brian, you suck at Pokemon battles. To which I say, good catch, we're only doing Nuzlocke's. Next up we need the proper equipment. This can be both physical products and software. Regardless of what kind of PokeTuber you are, you're going to need recording software. And the most common one is OBS. Now if you're considering streaming, I would suggest Streamlabs OBS, as it makes the setup for streams much easier and convenient. Both of these are completely free and offer many good options and settings for performances. You will want software for making thumbnails and layouts. Now you could use Paint but let's not get depressed so early in our career. I'd suggest using GIMP, which has nearly all the functionalities of Photoshop, just in a different format, but it's completely free. Or if you have the money, of course you buy Photoshop. Next, you may want a video editor. Now, this can be a little tricky as usually you have to either buy software or hope that the pirates left a free version somewhere in Google. I'm feeling lucky. Now you don't necessarily need a video editor, really if you're doing something simple like a Nuzlocke, you can probably set up everything through OBS and that's all you'll really need. However, if you want to add a little extra to your recording, then it could be useful to invest in one. Another optional item you can buy is a capture card. This is only really necessary if you are in need of Switch footage, as for most other Pokemon games, you can probably make do with an emulator and the ROM file for the game. Finally, the microphone. If you're super broke, using your phone should be fine. It's literally how I started out, but if you can invest in a mic, you definitely should. Finally, we're done with all the boring stuff. Now we can really get to work. For my first video, I'm gonna do a Nuzlocke challenge of my favorite Pokemon game. Oh, f Pokemon Pearl. So first we must get our layout done using the software we got. The layout for this scenario should depend on what game we're playing. For a Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, or Switch title that usually only requires one screen, well, we can leave one open space, whereas for the DS and 3DS titles, you may need to add a second screen. After that, we can decorate the layout as we please and then export the file. Now for the thumbnail itself, we will want something eye-catching. However, something that also relates to the content and events that occur in the video. Oh. 
Now it's time to finally record the footage using OBS. We add the layout we made, add the emulator we are using, connect our microphone, and hit that sweet record button, and let the recording magic begin. What's up everyone? Uh, it's not a great intro. Ultra Sun, am I right? Recordings can be as long as you'd prefer to be, but usually it's best to keep it shorter rather than longer, as people may get tired or pay less attention if it goes on too long. For Nuzlocke's, I find it best to keep it around 15 minutes per video, but again, the call is yours. After finishing the recordings comes the editing portion. But screw that, because my video is perfect as it is. Alright, the YouTube channel set up, I've redone the thumbnail, and the video file is ready. I think we're ready to upload. Now all that's left is to give our video a title, add some tags, type the name of the game, and we are ready to upload the video. Now I know what you're thinking, instant fame here we come, but it actually takes a little while for people to start discovering the video, so I'd give it about a couple hours. Many months later. <gasps> we did it! We did it! Woo! We're actually big funky tubers! And there you go, you're finally a Poketuber. Now we just do the same process over and over again until the day we die. Wait, what? Now that was a tutorial, but as much as I tried to explain everything in the video, I think I still missed an important aspect about being a Poketuber. Like sure, it's about getting noticed and maybe even one day becoming big, but at the end of the day, it was really all about just having fun. I think that's what I appreciate about the Poketuber community. It was a bunch of friendly people coming together to play and talk about the thing they love, Pokemon. And I honestly got to meet so many incredible people just by being a Poketuber, and that right there was pretty special. As for me, my Poketubing days are over, but I will still treasure the experience I had with it. And sure, I still upload Pokemon content every now and then, like I did a Sword and Shield review, and a Mystery Dungeon review, and an Ultra Sun Ultra Moon review. Oh. I never turned in my two-week notice, did I? <laughs>